Is my costume racist? Number two, do you belong to that group of people? If your answer is no, then just remember, you can't just borrow someone else's ethnicity or race or culture for the day. It doesn't really work like that. Unlike yourself, you don't have to live with the stigmas and stereotypes that your costume comes along with because you get to take it off. But for many people, it's not a costume. It's their everyday lives. For example, a couple years back, I actually dressed up as the sexy Native American girl, and I also dressed up as a geisha, not even knowing that a geisha meant a prostitute. Did I question the implications that my costume would have on Native American women or Asian and Japanese women? No! Why? Probably because I am neither one of them, so I wouldn't put that much research or thought. You can wear an illegal alien costume, but you'll never have to go through the experience or journey of the 11.7 million undocumented, not illegal, that's offensive, individuals in the United States. Your costume is making light of the really difficult journey and experience of these undocumented individuals. Relax, it's not like I'm doing blackface. I'd like to really think that for a lot of us, we understand that doing something like blackface for Halloween or ever is never appropriate and extremely offensive and extremely racist. But the truth is, is that Halloween has brought out the worst in many people. Florida University, UC University, some assemblymen that did blackface for Purim, Colton Haynes from Teen Wolf, and some Dallas cowboy cheerleader. Don't be fooled, blackface is not the only thing that is racist. Wearing a little gangster hat or ghetto fab wig is also equally as offensive. The natural hair movement purposely works to reject the European beauty standards that have been shoved down the throats of people of color, especially African Americans, for centuries. So while you think it's fun to wear your afro or your locks for Halloween, your silky straight hair will never be deemed unpresentable and you'll never be forbidden to go to school with the hair that naturally grows out of your head like what has happened to seven-year-old Tiana Parker. Why are you so sad? Because they didn't like my dreams. <laughs> How will locks or afros ever be seen as presentable when we are making a mockery out of the hair by selling and wearing them as costumes. By wearing cultures that aren't yours as a costume, you are subjecting those people to stereotype threats and belittling their experience. And if you answer, yes, I am part of the culture, the race, the ethnicity that this costume is representing, then you could still be guilty of perpetuating really negative stereotypes. For example, in high school, I was a chola. I chose this costume, one, because it was really simple to make, two, because I knew that it was probably going to be accepted by others. I was exploiting myself because I knew it was going to be humorous. Make sure to ask yourself how that costume connects to the larger issue of identity and inequality. Are you perpetuating a stereotype of your own race, ethnicity, or culture? And if so, why? What are you saying with your costume? And please do not think you are paying Native Americans any type of homage by wearing your $29.99 polyester mass manufactured costume. That's just plain disrespectful.